So in this video, what I want to talk about is how to integrate inverse trigonometric functions. And we're going to look at two examples, the integral of the inverse tangent, arctangent, and the integral of the inverse sine. And I'm going to work through this example in some detail, and I will leave this one for you as an exercise, but I will give you the answer in the video. So when we look at such an integral, we might think, I don't know how to integrate this function. But what I hope you do know is how to differentiate it using implicit differentiation. In fact, I hope that um, many of you will actually know immediately what the result for differentiating this function is. And if you have a function which you know how to differentiate, but you don't know how to integrate it, well, you can try to use that knowledge and the technique of integration by parts to calculate the integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to use integration by parts And the other example, which is very reminiscent of this type of integration, is if you recall how one integrates the logarithm. So again, in the logarithm, you can calculate the integral using integration by parts, recognizing that you know how to differentiate the natural logarithm. So what I want to do now is, on the next slide, to look at this example in detail. So what we're going to do now is to calculate this integral using integration by parts, and to that purpose we're going to write our integrand as the arctangent of x multiplied by 1 integrated with respect to x. So this part of the integrand is the part that we want to integrate but can't. So instead what we're going to do is we are going to differentiate it. So let us call this part here u. And this factor of 1 we're going to integrate so let us call it v prime, and what we are using is the integration by parts formula, which tells us that the integral of u v prime with respect to our variable is u times v minus the integral of u prime v with respect to our variable. So if u is the arctangent of x, that means that u prime is its derivative, which we recall is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And similarly, v prime is 1, and v is the integral of 1, and that's very easy, it's just x. So now we have all of the tools, and what we can do is just substitute these into this formula for this particular integral. So what we have is that our integral is u times v from here, and u is this, v is this, and because it looks nicer, I'm going to write this as v times u. I'm just going to swap the order around. I'm going to write it as x times the inverse tangent function of x minus the integral of, and now it is u prime v. u prime we know, so that's 1 over 1 plus x squared, and that's going to be multiplied by v which is x, and because I want to multiply it, I'm just going to put it on the top immediately. And we want to integrate this with respect to x. 
So now we pause and look at the integral that we have. So when we look at this integral here, what we can recognize after a moment is that the numerator here is related to the denominator. The numerator up to a number is the derivative of the denominator. And I can make that very explicit by saying that I can put a factor of 2 here, but then of course I have to put a factor of a half outside, so that overall I've just multiplied by 1. And by writing it in this way, with a half here and a 2 here, I see that I have exactly in the numerator the derivative of the denominator here. So this means that our integral i is equal to x times the inverse tangent function of x minus a half. And now this is going to be the logarithm of the modulus of 1 plus x squared. And let me add on an integration constant. So this is our result for the integral of the arc tangent function. And let's just check that we've calculated this last integral correctly. If I take this and I differentiate it, I'm going to get 1 over the argument here which is 1 over 1 plus x squared, which is good. And we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the argument, and that's going to be 0 plus 2x. So I'm going to get 2x over 1 plus x squared, and that's exactly what I wanted. So yes, we have calculated this, this integral correctly. And it's always sensible when we calculate an integral to check our work. So let me just do this. The derivative of our integral is going to be, so first of all we're going to differentiate this product of terms, so we're going to use the product rule, and when we differentiate the x we're just going to get 1 times this, so we'll just write this as the arctangent of x, and then when we differentiate the arctangent, we're going to get 1 over 1 plus x squared, that's this result that we used earlier, multiplied by x. So we're going to get plus x over 1 plus x squared. And then from the final term here, we have the result that we just talked about. We have minus a half, that's the multiplicative factor that's sitting here. And then the derivative of the log of 1 plus x squared, we've just said, is 2x over 1 plus x squared. So we have a 2x over 1 plus x squared. And we see that the half and the 2 cancel. And then we see that the remaining terms that we have here, the x over 1 plus x squared, minus x over 1 plus x squared are also going to cancel. So this and this will cancel, and we are left alone with the inverse tangent function. So the derivative of our integral is the initial integrand, so we recognize that we have calculated this integral correctly. So. Just to summarize, what we recognized was that to calculate this integral, because we could differentiate it but couldn't see anything else that we could do with it, we could write it as the integrand times 1 and use integration by parts. In that way, we were able to use our ability to differentiate the initial integrand, and this gave us an integral which, fortunately, we were able to calculate, and then we at the end we've just checked that we've calculated it and got the right answer, and this has shown us that indeed we have calculated the integral correctly. So on the final slide I'm just going to write out 
what we should do for the inverse sine and set that for you as an exercise. So what I'd like you to do is now to check that you can use these techniques to calculate the following integral, the integral of arc sine. And what I would suggest that you do is that you write this down and calculate it on a sheet of paper with the video paused and that later on you come back and that you check you've got the right answer. So I suggest you stop the video now and come back later. OK, welcome back. So what I hope you have been able to calculate is the following. You should have seen that the integral of arc sine of x with respect to x is x times the arc sine of x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared plus perhaps some integration constant. So that's the result that you should have obtained. It is a good thing to check your result by differentiation, but the primary part of this exercise for you to do is to check that starting from here using techniques similar to what we looked at for the arc tangent, you end up with this result. And with that, I will conclude this video.